and welcome back. I'm Christy Zorowski and this is Cooking in the Kitchen with Christy. Uh, our next recipe is going to be a butternut squash risotto dish. This is a beautiful, nice seasonal dish with the sweetness of the butternut squash. Um, there's really a lot of different things that you can do with this dish, variations, different uh, market seasonal produce items that you could add in to kind of make it your own. But what I'm going to show you here today is with butternut squash and some Parmesan cheese. So the first step of this recipe, we have our uh, Dutch oven going over here. It's nice and warm. So I'm going to pour in a little bit of olive oil from Stamatopoulos. And this olive oil you can get at the Canton Farmer's Market. So we're just gonna let that heat up for a minute. And then next, I'm going to take an onion and dice it up. You can get onions and the butternut squash from the vendors at the Canton Farmer's Market, such as Perrin's and Prohaska. It's always nice to get your produce locally and it's always nice to use seasonal produce as well. Um, that's when it's highest uh, in its nutrition value. So you wanna eat seasonally. So I'm going to add these diced onions into the olive oil and you can hear that nice sizzling sound because the pan's been warmed up, the olive oil's been warmed up. So we're just gonna let those simmer Next, I'm going to add in some garlic. So it's a lot easier to buy the garlic that's already been peeled and in cloves, but it's nice to have it nice and fresh in that process. So to get this skin off, all we're going to do is hit it with our knife and then just kind of pop it right off. After that, we're just going to slice down, not all the way to the back, but just enough to create um, some nice little pieces that then we can run our knife back through in the opposite direction. And then from there, we're just going to gently run our knife through a couple more times. to get that garlic nice and chopped up. And see, it was simple as that. You don't need to go and buy that uh, pre-chopped garlic stuff. Sometimes it can have a little bit of a weird flavor. And it's always nice to use ingredients that are as minimally processed as possible. And actually, we have a, uh, a garlic vendor at the market as well, so you should stop by and get some of their garlic products. So we're going to just stir that garlic in and let the, both the garlic and the onions cook until they're nice and caramelized. At this point also, we're going to add in a little bit of sea salt. Adding salt throughout the cooking process just to kind of helps build the flavor and deepen it a little bit more than if you just add it in at the end. So we're gonna keep an eye on this just to make sure that the garlic doesn't burn because if it does, it starts to get a little bit bitter and we don't want that. So at this point, we are going to add in our rice for the risotto. This rice is called aborio rice and we use this because of the starch content that it has. It's ideal for making risotto. Risotto is a very creamy pasta dish, or creamy rice dish, and it gets its creaminess just from the starch and the rice alone. As you cook it, and once we start adding in the, uh, the stock for this, the rice starts to release all that starch, and it kind of thickens up that broth as it absorbs it, and it gives it a really nice creamy consistency. And that is the essence of uh, risotto. So we're adding in the rice right now because we want to kind of toast it a little bit before we start to add in the stock. And again, that's really just to add a little bit more of a nutty flavor to the end product. 
Okay, so once we get that toasted up a little bit, we are going to now add in some of our stock. I have some organic vegetable stock that I'm using here. And what we're going to do is we're going to add in, I have about uh, four cups total to a cup of the arborio rice. I'm going to add in just enough to kind of cover the rice. And what you want to do is you want to keep your heat at this point on high and let it come back up to a boil. And at that point, then you can kind of turn the heat down a little bit lower. But the most important part of making risotto is that you're continuously stirring the risotto because that causes the rice to, again, release some of that starch and to make it really nice and creamy. So like I said, we'll let this come up to a boil and we'll continue to stir it. Once all of that broth is absorbed, then we'll add in a little bit more broth, let it come up to a boil and continue to stir, and repeat until all of the broth has been absorbed and the rice is just almost al dente. So, after this, we're just gonna let it cook up for a little bit and we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back for more after this Market Minute tip that will help you with some of your cooking in your own home kitchen. Hi, I'm Christy and this is a Market Minute. Today I'll be talking with you about coconut oil. Coconut oil is a nice um, substitute to use in cooking. It's a high heat oil, so you can use it for stir fries or for searing your chicken and you won't have to worry about it burning. Um, such as like a lot of times when you cook with olive oil or extra virgin olive oil, sometimes it burns if you cook at a high temperature. You won't experience um, the same thing with coconut oil. Also, it's nice because it has some health benefits too. It has medium chain fatty acids, which actually help your body break down fat and use it as energy versus just storing it in your body, which no one wants extra fat stored in their bodies. So um, you can see here, at room temperature, it's a solid, but as soon as it goes above 75 degrees, it becomes a liquid. So sometimes in the summertime, depending on how warm your house is, the container will actually turn into liquid. Um, the nice thing too about the coconut oil is that it doesn't have a super strong flavor. So when you're cooking with it, people that are picky about coconut flavor won't necessarily notice that you're using coconut oil. Um, again, coconut oil is a beautiful thing to cook with because of its health, health benefits and also because you can use it at high heat temperatures. This is a Market Minute. We'll see you at the market. All right, welcome back. Uh, risotto is almost done. As you can see here, the rice has absorbed most of the broth and it's created a nice uh, creamy consistency and it's perfectly al dente. So at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to take our beautiful roasted butternut squash and we'll add that in. Give it a little stir. If you wanted to, you could also add in some chorizo from Steinhauser. You could add in some, you know, mushrooms if you wanted to instead of the squash, but this is just really a nice seasonal dish. The, the squash sweetens it up and gives it a really nice flavor. Um, so from here, we're pretty much done. All we have to do is serve it up into our platter. And you can see the consistency is just nice creamy and we didn't even have to use any cream or fats like that to make it that way. So this is a really nice, healthy, satisfying, hearty dish. 
and it's a nice crowd pleaser too. It's something that's a little bit more elegant, but it's really simple to do. So if you're having friends, family over, whatever, you can really wow them with this nice risotto dish. And if you want to also, you can stop by Zingerman's and grab some cheese. We're gonna take a little bit of uh, Parmesan here and just set it right on top as a nice little garnish. Or if you wanted to, you could actually stir it in and mix it throughout the entire risotto dish. But there you have it. This was our butternut squash risotto dish. We'll see you at the market.